breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorming with myself, Dr. Colby Condos, and my associate, Dr. Glenn Harrison. Say hi to everybody. Hey, Dr. Colby. How are you today? Good, man. Uh, so today we are talking about something that literally neither of us will ever experience, and that is menopause. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to have to delicately break this down because uh, obviously we are not experts in how any of this stuff is going to feel as far as how, what the physical manifestations are, but we do see it very commonly in our offices and we see what the signs and symptoms are of when someone is going through menopause. And we are going to explain today what is normal and what is abnormal when a female is going through menopause because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about maybe what the norms are, what society perceives as normal um, when an individual is going through menopause. So yeah, let's get, let's get started on this. So um, can you just go through and tell us like what menopause actually is? Huh. Well, I'm going to simplify this. <laughs> so menopause is really where where the female reproductive organs slow down their, their production of essential reproductive hormones. That's really what it is. And, and it, is a, it is a challenge on the body. Um, you know, really, it's a loss of menses. That's really what it is. There are other, other uh, symptoms that come with it. But I think, I think to summarize, that's really what it is. It's, it's the end of, end of having a period. Perfect. That's pretty, pretty simple, standard <laughs> explanation. Mm -hmm. So now is the part that we're going to get into that I think that people are going to get a lot of value out of because we're going to talk about what normal menopause should look like in a female. So why don't you tell us what that should look like? Okay. So, yeah, I'm still a man. So from what I see, <laughs> um, uh, menopause is really normal menopause. There's not that much of it out there. And I know you see that, Dr. Colby. It's, it's not that common, normal menopause. So what is normal menopause? What should normal be by definition? It should be where these hormones, down, hormones where your body produces less of these hormones, but um, that's it. A loss of menstruation, um, that is it. That is it. Wait, so you mean to tell me these <laughs> females that are experiencing hot flashes and lack of sleep and irritability and fatigue and osteoporosis, none of that should happen. I hate to break it to you, Dr. Colby, but nope, none of that should happen. That's, um, that is being labeled as the new normal menopause of osteoporosis, of vaginal dryness, of painful intercourse, of hair thinning, of um, low energy, may have, I may have said that, weight gain, loss of libido, all of that stuff. And, and of course, osteoporosis and osteopenia, bone density problems. All of those things are completely abnormal. That's a sign of imbalance. So when you say imbalance, I, th I actually think that this is, that was a perfect segue, man. That was well done. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. So when we talk about imbalances, um, I think it's important to realize that when we stop, when, when we don't, but when patients or, or females or, uh, go through menopause and they stop having menses and they stop producing the normal amounts of their sex hormones, especially estrogen, that is where you see a lot of these symptoms coming from, right? Uh -huh. So we look at it and if we're not making estrogen anymore, not us, but we were talking like you know, the third, not in the first person, but when females stop producing estrogen, they kind of have the ability to make estrogen in other places to kind of pick up the slack a little bit. Um, so that helps you kind of regulate this. Um, a big portion of the patients that I see in my office that are suffering from menopause um, symptoms, and especially like hot flashes and stuff like that, and the osteoporosis, those are two, two really common ones that people present for care in my office, is a big player in those, in those symptoms and in those, uh, in the causality of those symptoms is actually inflammation. So yeah. you don't, you know, you don't, we don't really think about that because we've kind of been conditioned to think that, Oh, you know, I'm having hot flashes 
this is normal. This, you know, my, my mother went through this, you know, her, whatever, whatever. Like it is not normal. You should not be having hot flashes. You should not be losing your bone density and developing osteoporosis or osteopenia. You shouldn't be losing your hair. Like it should literally just be that you stop having, you stop menstruating. Exactly. I think you simplified it quite well, but we've, with this level of sickness and uh, disorder and imbalance going into menopause and, and you know, in perimenopause, uh, people are just assuming these are normal now. The, the doctors and the medical profession has been telling people this is normal when they're suffering and even their minds are changing. Their emotions are changing. There's depression, there's rage, there's, there's helplessness. Um, it, it breaks up relationships. It is, it is chaotic. And, and, and you hit on something and we're going to touch on um, where these hormones are supposed to come from, but there's two other things that I forgot and I had listed down here. You talked about osteoporosis. Arthritis is a big player in menopause. If it, un, you know, poor menopause, or if we want to call it pathogenic menopause, maybe that's something we should, we should term. Um, but autoimmune, autoimmunity and heart disease. So much higher rates of autoimmunity and heart disease with, with menopause when it goes wrong. Yep. Okay. And, and I actually read a study that even with hormone replacement therapy, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't eliminate the risk of cardiovascular disease. It mm -hmm. doesn't. Um, so even if you take, um, you know, exogenous forms of estrogen, uh, it, I, the, at least what I've found in the, in the literature and in the, in the studies is that it doesn't significantly drop the incidence of cardiovascular incident or the risk factors. So that's not really supplying you with a, with a good alternative or the answer either. Instead of like looking at, you know, providing, you know, estrogen replacement or, or hormone replacement therapy or, you know, supplements that push estrogen production or whatever, whatever, whatever. Why don't we look at why this stuff isn't doing it naturally? Exactly. And, and then back to the pathogenic or problematic menopause versus healthy menopause, A healthy menopause, your period disappears and you're, you, you can't have babies anymore. Um, but you don't, you shouldn't have all these other problems. So, so if the, if the ovaries and these other glands slow down and making less estrogen and progesterone, those are the two big players, you still need it to function. You still need these hormones to function. You need a certain amount of them. You're not going to have that high of a level to be fertile, but you're still going to have enough to maintain bone tissue, you know, maintain your brain function, maintain your heart, maintain your skin, maintain your libido and your weight and energy. Um, but there's another system in place and that's the adrenal glands. These little guys step up to the plate. They do lots of things, but they're known to provide cortisol and, and, major hormone, but they play an essential role in supplementing your body or adding in more estrogen and progesterone when your ovaries are slowing down. So that's the beauty of it. You should have enough uh, a hormone with this backup system, if you want to call it that, the adrenal glands, to be able to keep the body rolling. Menopause should be a speed, uh, should be a light little speed bump. It shouldn't be, you know, hitting a curb like so many people go through. So that's the difference. So that's the backup system. And so the people who go through menopause and it just transforms their life, their body and their world in a negative way, it's, it's, it's terrible. The, the people who have a terrible menopause or a healthy menopause, it almost always comes down to a level of inflammation. Like you said, Dr. Colby and, um, and having healthy adrenal glands. So maybe, Dr. Colby, what would you say uh, a person that's going to have a problematic menopause, what are they going to look like? What is their presentation going to be that there's going to be an indication of adrenal weakness, their backup system's not ready? Yeah, so this would be the person that has, like, you know, the chronic fatigue. This would be the person that has, you know, maybe prediabetes or they're diabetic. Um, this would be the person where you look at it and they just, you know, they just don't look healthy. You could do a panel on them and their cortisol level levels are going to be all over the place. Um, their sex hormones are all over the place. Their inflammatory markers are going to be really, really high. I mean, it's, if you look at someone who has, you know, I had a lady, the lady that we were talking about um, before we started that has all these severe symptoms of menopause. I mean, all of these, she checks all these boxes. She has an autoimmune condition. You know, she's got a thyroid issue. 
Okay. She, um, she eats a really, really unhealthy diet, right? She, when I asked what her bowel movements are like, you know, well, they're really sporadic, irregular, and mostly diarrhea. Are you tired? Yep. I'm tired all day. Okay. Do you, uh, are you waking up at night? Yep. I wake up at between, you know, two and five, three and five. All these things that maybe point to you as like them having adrenal insufficiency or um, are all getting checked. So then you have to really evaluate and determine like, why, why is that? Um, a lot of my patients that come in that have really significant um, symptoms during menopause, I look at their inflammatory load because the thing about inflammation is these inflammatory, these pro-inflammatory cytokines, they affect everything. You know, they affect your ability to, you know, metabolize sugar. They affect your ability to develop these hormones that you need from these adrenal glands. They affect your brain's ability and they can actually drive a stress response, which in turn drives more inflammation. So it's really ramping it up. They also can cause increased permeability of your gut, which as we know is a huge player in pretty much everything. Um, so big, big, my patients that come in that have all these, uh, these menopause symptoms, we look at the inflammatory load, the inflammatory cascade, getting those things quenched, putting them out, um, trying to get them under control. And then we look at supporting the adrenal glands, whether that's your diet, exercise, supplements kind of thing. Um, because it's terrible to have to go through all this stuff and think it's normal because it's really not. It, exactly. You see people lose their hobbies, their, their, their love lives are compromised. Relationships have been compromised. Um, it, it is, it's devastating. And again, you and I haven't experienced it, but we got front row seats. You know, we have family that experienced this stuff. And, and, you know, there was a lady I worked with over 30 years, she had hot flashes over 30 years. And again, I don't know what it's like to experience this, but she, and I've had many clients say that, you know, when they were still working, uh, some of them were already retired, but, but they were still working. They would have to change their blouses two or three times in a day because they would be, the hot flashes would be so severe that they were so sweated up and yeah, then it affects sleep as well, naturally. Um, so, you know, so I, I, you hit the nail on the head when we talk about this backup system being the adrenal glands and, and how to nurture those going into menopause. If you are tired and sick and lethargic and have digestive issues and you go into menopause, hands down, that menopause is going to be a nightmare. However, if you go into menopause and your adrenal glands and your adrenal system is healthy to have that backup hormone, um, and, and you don't have these other inflammatory conditions, digestive disorders, et cetera, um, you are going to go through menopause and it's going to be a very mild transition. And I know people are suffering with this. They're like, well, it sure as heck wasn't mild for me, but that's because the, you know, the, there were problems when you hit that speed bump. And, and the backup and, system wasn't in place, right? Yeah, the backup system wasn't in place. But even if you are suffering with it, again, people I've had that had menop or hot flashes 20, 30 years, uh, they were able to turn them around and get them to get, you know, get rid of them. So this is a very serious thing because the majority of the population of the world are female and dealing with this. And now they've been told it's normal. And then they run. And this, this is where I'm a little bit of a rant, but I get so mad at this because people go to their medical doctors and they say, Oh, well, well, you know, that's menopause. We have to give you extra hormone. So they jack them up with estrogen and then that doesn't work. Then it's progesterone. And then that helps a little bit. And then there's testosterone. And the next thing, you know, they've got hormone numbers uh, that should be in a 25 year old and they're, you know, and they're 60 or 55, their body doesn't know what to do. It's confusing. And then you have to untangle all of this. So I don't want to rant on the negativity of external hormones and bioidenticals, but there is, there is problems with them. And the first line of defense should be balance what you have before you always add more things in because it just leads to more and more problems. But even if you are dealing with that and struggling with it, there's still is hope. There's a lot of hope. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, without beating a dead horse or, <laughs> or going too far into this, I guess the main takeaway that we wanted to, to, uh, to provide with you guys, to impress to you guys is, is it's not normal to have these things. And if you're having the stuff that we just talked about, the hot flashes, you know, the difficulty concentrating, the mood swings, you know, the night sweats, whatever you're having, find someone that can help. Um, you can reach out to us. Uh, you can, you can email us. Our 
email for this podcast is info at brainstormingwiththedocs.com. Uh, you can get in a lot of information off of our websites. My website is www.northlakeschiropractic.com. I am always providing some links on Facebook. Our Facebook page is North Lakes Chiropractic and Functional Neurology. Dr. Glenn has got a website that is chock full of great information. Uh, he's going to give that to you guys as well right now. <laughs> yeah, triple www.drgharrison.com or just Google the Center of Functional Medicine Denver. You'll find us. There's a whole lot of videos. There's a whole lot of content. And I talk about menopause and many other things and strategies as well. So definitely check that out. But don't accept it. Don't accept it. And, and, and the adrenal glands, as we keep talking about, are a big player in this. And, you know, I, I, I've been at conferences, and there was this one conference that this doctor, and I don't know, maybe you were at it too, Dr. Colby. But I remember there was a picture the doctor, the, the speaker put up and it was this beautiful, calm ocean beach. It was, it was gorgeous. And he said, this is your body going through menopause, going, uh, going into menopause when you have healthy adrenal glands. And then he flipped the slide and the slide was this massive, it was almost like a hurricane with clouds and lightning and the waves were massive. And he said, this is your body going into menopause with adrenal fatigue and adrenal problems. So I don't know that, that Im those images stuck in my head and, and everybody can restore their adrenal glands and correct their inflammation going into this or even while they're in it and mitigate some of those symptoms. Yeah. So definitely get help, reach out to us if you need to, if you can't get to us or, or whatever, we'll try to help you find someone that can. Yeah. Um, maybe we should find like a provider list or something like that. That might be a good resource for people. <laughs> yeah, um, that might be. Mm -hmm. But uh, so if you guys have anything you'd like us to cover, please email us like I at the email I said before, info at uh, brainstormingwiththedocs.com. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll see you at the next one. We'll have to come up with something something clever or something cool, or maybe someone will email us some ideas. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Dr. So, until next time, buddy. I will All talk right. to you later. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.